Hi everyone, my name is Kinya Ota. I have spent more than 10 years studying goldfish evolution and development. Recently, my friend asked me to make a detailed video about goldfish developmental evolutionary biology. So I have decided to produce this video series based on my papers and my book. We will explore goldfish evo devo. In the previous video, we discussed how to observe embryos before they hatch. This time we will explain how to observe the larvae and the juvenile after they hatch. Previously, we briefly explained the developmental stages of larvae and juveniles after hatching, showing that each part of the goldfish develops in a specific order. For example, fin develop in this order pectoral fins, caudal fin, dorsal fin, anal fin, and then pelvic fins. Additionally, the swim bladder initially forms as one and later divides into two as it grows. So, uh, how can we observe the sequence in which these organs appear? In this video, we will explain observation methods based on our previous research. There are two main observation methods. One method involves anesthetizing the fish, fixing them with a fixative to preserve them in a lifelike state and then carefully observing them later. The other method involves photographing the live fish and keeping records. The fixative method allows for repeated observation of the same fixed specimen and enables multiple photographs. Tissue sections can also be made and stained for microscopic observation allowing detailed examination at the cellular level. Transparent specimen can be prepared to observe skeletal growth. In other words, detailed information can be obtained from a single specimen at the cellular and the tissue levels. However, if detailed cellular observations are not necessary, photographing the live fish and keeping growth record is a good method. There are two main ways to observe live fish. One way is to keep the fish in groups and take periodic photographs. By observing and photographing a large number of fish multiple times, we can estimate the timing of the appearance of various tissues and organs. However, unlike embryos inside eggs, hatched goldfish larvae and juveniles swim freely. Newly hatched larvae look very similar, making it difficult to distinguish between individuals by appearance alone. This makes continuous observation of the same individual challenging. As a result, it is difficult to determine the order in which tissues and organs appear within the same individual. Due to the individual differences in growth rate, there is no guarantee that the appearance order of all tissues and organs is perfectly proportional to the number of the days or body size. To determine the sequence in which each tissue and organs appears in each individual, we keep each fish in a separate container. Newly hatched goldfish are sorted under the microscope and placed in separate containers such as a plastic dish or beakers. Each container is numbered so that we know which fish comes from which eggs fertilized on which date. As the fish grow, they are transferred to larger containers. In our laboratory, we have a system of clustered aquarium where 1.5 liter tanks can be arranged side by side, allowing us to keep over 50 goldfish larvae at a time. We regularly observe and photograph them. To keep the fish still during the photography, they are lightly anesthetized. Depending on their size, the fish are placed directly on plastic dishes or on the plastic dishes lined with agarose for photography. At this time, we use agarose lined dishes with V-shaped globes in the center. This allows us to freely adjust the angle of the fish for photography and to gently move the fish to desired position using a handling stick. 
This handling stick is made by attaching a fishing line to a pipe at the tip and the end of the chopstick. It is very simple to make. Using this handling stick, we can gently move the fish to a position and angle that is easy to observe without harming the fish. By photographing the body parts at high magnification from the same angle each time, we can actually record the growth of fish body part of individual fish. This observation and photography process is repeated many times from the fourth days post fertilization when the larvae hatch until they reach sexual maturity about a year later. During the larvae and the juvenile stages, we can also observe skeletal growth. Therefore, from this stage, we use fluorescent microscope and a reagent called calcein to photograph the skeleton. Using calcein allows us to stain calcified tissue each as bones with fluorescence without harming the fish. This makes it possible to clearly observe fin rays and other skeletal structures that are difficult to see under normal light. Most importantly, there is no need to put the fish in a fixative or perform the process of making transparent specimens. Thus we can continue to observe the same individuals. By taking clear photographs, we can determine the timing of the appearance of various skeletal structures. As I have mentioned many times, we have repeatedly observed the development of goldfish to publish these research results. We have carefully observed the development and growth of each body part. But why do we focus so much on the developmental process? When explaining animal evolution, we often compare the appearance of adult animals and discuss the evolutionary process by adding phylogenetic relationship. However, I feel this is quite strange. Consider humans, for example. Human-like goldfish start from a single round fertilized eggs growth in the mother's belly are born as babies and then grow into adults. Generation repeated this development and growth process leading to the current form of humans. Therefore, it is more reasonable to think that the sudden change in the form of adult did not occur in the history of animal evolution. Remember the series of videos we have shown so far. In goldfish, the pectoral fins appear first following by the pelvic fins later in the larvae. I have explained that our hand correspond to the pectoral fins which appear first and our feet correspond to the pelvic fins which appear later. However, how is it for frogs? Do the hand or feet of tadpoles appear first? Also, how is a human baby depicted in the belly? If we realize that the order of appearance of limbs differ from each animal, then they find it curious you are standing at the entrance to evolutionary developmental biology which differs slightly from the evolutionary biology you have known. This goldfish evolutionary developmental biology series will continue. We will explain in more detail the relationship between goldfish development and evolution. Now a review of the next video. So far we have uh, explained how to observe goldfish. Next time we will explain the management of food organisms for goldfish such as paramecium and brine shrimps. It is time to say goodbye. I hope you learned something new about goldfish development and evolution from this episode. Please be sure to subscribe to our channel to catch the next episode. See you soon.